Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to another fly tying session. I'm Brandon King from Broken Tibet Fly Co. And today we have something special for you. And that is because we are tying carry specials. Awesome still water fly pattern. Um, yeah, make sure you got a few of these in your box. They are uh, a, they're a killer. They're a killer in the still water. Um, you know, these things are, it's, it's an attractor fly. So you're imitating dragons, you're imitating damsels. Um, the way we tie in the, the hackle just kind of gives it like a pulsating, um, movement in the water. Uh, it's, it's very buggy looking and fish absolutely just attack this thing. Uh, in the vice today, I am using Togen's, uh, just a regular size 12 nymph hook. Um, been using Togen's for, for many years. Uh, they are, uh, they're just fantastic hooks. I mean, like they're durable, they're, they're priced competitively. You can buy them in bulk, just super easy. Um, yeah, so can't speak anything. Uh, can't speak higher than, uh, just using Togans. And all I'm doing here is just kind of giving a bit of a, tying a bit of a, well, dressing the hook. <laughs> um, okay. So the first bit of material that we are going to be tying in is, as you saw from the, uh, the little intro there, I just got a bunch of, uh, these are pheasant rump, uh, feathers. And so what I'm going to be doing is you can see where the, the flu starts, all the soft, the soft part of the hackle. I'm just going to isolate that and just kind of peel it back. And it's not, it's not peeling back that nice. There we go. And just going to do the same to the other side. So just expose where those the soft feathers start and then we're just left with the with the top there and the tail super easy to tie in um, you can see we just want we we don't want it to be hanging over too too much and we don't want it to be too tight so we just kind of want like that happy medium and the best way to do that is just to grab it with your left hand Come over the feather with your right and your thread. Just kind of tie that in. Bring your thread up. We can come in here and snip that off. And then you can kind of go back over it here with your thread just to make sure that that is uh, secured down. The, uh, the pheasant rump tail, pheasant rump tail feathers are we're just using a natural color. So I don't know if you saw that on the beginning, but it's just got a beautiful array of colors. And for this fly, I kind of like sticking to the, uh, to the gray side, but also these, uh, these browns and olives, um, that come in there look really nice as well. Okay. So we got the thread on, Oh, the thread, by the way, uh, this is just a plain UTC 70, uh, rusty Brown. And I'm just going to stop just behind the eye. Oops. Grab another, uh, grab another feather here and I'm just prepping this below the desk right into the garbage so it doesn't make a mess. Um, but I've just, I've essentially, I've just done the same thing. Just isolate the flu from the bottom of the stem, get all the soft parts off and I'm just going to grab the tip here, bring everything else back. So kind of what we've done is just make like a makeshift, uh, Mercedes Benz logo, right? And I'm going to come in here, trim off the top, bring all that other hackle of the feathers up. So now we got a peace sign and these feathers have like a natural, so you can see the curvature to it. So this is a concave and you got a convex and the concave part is the, uh, the non shiny. So kind of like the dull look to it. And then the convex side has the shine. So we're going to tie these shine, the shiny side down. So the concave side is facing up and you can see right where that stem starts or right where, right where we snipped, snipped it off. That's going to be where I'm tying it in uh, right behind the eye. So all I'm going to do now is just grab all those feathers. And come in here with my thread and just go over top. 
you can tie these the uh, the traditional way, you know, with the wet hackle um, feathers where you just tie it on, then you use your hackle pliers to kind of uh, to wrap it around. I find that this way works fine. We can do a quick little measure here. You can see that those, when we tie it, when, or uh, when we fold these back, they're going to come right to that tail, which is what we want. So uh, we'll leave that alone for now. Uh, the next bit of material that we're going to tie in is the Semperfly Dirty Bug Yarn. I'm not sure if you guys have used this before, but this is just a, like, look how buggy that looks. Just thick wool. Uh, the color is fantastic on these. Um, so we're going to do a few different ones tonight. We got the, uh, uh, this one is the, let's read it here, Caddis Brown. And then I also have the Olive Caddis which is dark green. It's got a bit of uh, some yellows and orange and black and stuff in there too. So super buggy. These things look great. I'm just going to peel off um, a couple, uh, couple inches here. So I just peeled off a strand. Return my thread up to the top here, just tie this in. So yeah, so for today we're gonna do a few of the uh, the caddis brown. We're gonna do a couple of the olive caddis, uh, dirty bug yarn. And then if you notice at the intro, I also brought some uh, span flex and this is an olive span flex. So we're gonna use that as the, uh, as the body, but first things first, cheers guys. That is the uh, Backcountry Trailblazer Pale Ale. Um, those get the breweries out of Squamish, which is about 45 minutes uh, outside of Vancouver. Fantastic brewery, brewery. And the beer is great. Okay, so I'm just going to wrap this up. I'm kind of doing like, well, I wouldn't say overlapping wraps, but like they're just, they're just kind of touching. Um, which is fine. And then we're going to use our dubbing brush to, uh, uh, to expose some of those, uh, to make the dubbing kind of pop. Um, so I, if you notice that on camera, I've stopped just short. Let's see if we can see that better. Just short. So you can still see my thread from underneath. Um, that's going to allow us to, when we fold these backs, just going to be a nice clean, uh, clean look to the fly. Snip that out. Just come over there with a couple more thread wraps. And now we can push this back. So all I'm going to take is my index finger and my thumb, kind of brush these back. And when I'm brushing them back, you do want to try to get the fibers, the hackle, um, all over the fly to surround it. That's really going to help the pulsating movement in the water. So bring that back. And then I'm just going to get a bit of a head going here at the front. And you can kind of tease these feathers down the way you like them. And then just kind of continue to help your cause there. And there we go. Oh, my thread jumped. Let's try that again. There we go. Oh, you know what I didn't do? <laughs> we were talking about it, but I didn't do it. Uh, I didn't take the dubbing brush and dub the, uh, the dirty bug yarn. That's okay. We'll do it on the next one. Okay, come in here with a bit of Zappa Gap just to secure the uh, the thread down at the front. And it really doesn't need more than just a dab. And that is gonna dry nice. So you can see right away, just a classic fly. Um, these these hackles just kind of pulsate through the water as it gets stripped through, uh, stripped around weed beds, that sort of thing. So um, again, I'm, I think I mentioned this is a size 12. You can tie these bigger, you can tie them smaller. 
Um, I got a few of them in a size 14, but um, just for the sake of the tying demonstration here today, and uh, we're just going to do the size 12. Okay, that is the first fly done. You can kind of take check it out from all angles there. Super buggy fly, but um, <laughs> on this next one, let's make sure we don't make the same mistake and uh, let's use our dubbing brush. Okay, size 12, hook in the vise, attach our tying thread, cut off the tag. And we're just dressing that hook all the way down to the barb. We'll stop there. Grab another feather. And again, just below the scenes here, I'm just getting rid of all the, the flu. So we just have a regular, regular feather. Pinch the ends. Find out where we want to tie that so that looks pretty good there. Come in with our right hand. And then just wrap that feather up. Snip off the excess. And then I'm just going to come back over it here. And just make sure everything is uh, secured down. Looks pretty good. Return our thread to the hook eye. Grab another feather. I've already pinched the top off this one. Shiny side facing down. Tie that in. And it kind of works out. So the way we tied our tail into the halfway point, and then we tie this feather in the opposite way. When we snip this off, that gap that we originally made is now full. So the fly just has more of that uh, and just smooth, smoother presentation there. And we will get our dirty bug yarn. Tie this in. Tie that in right to the tail and then return our thread and then we're going to wrap this up. I'm going to stop just short just so it makes tying in that head easier. Snip and yes I did not forget <laughs> we got the uh, the dubbing brush and we're just going to pull some of these fibers out so just kind of hit it from all angles you can just see all that material just popping now then you can kind of come in here and brush it back just helps that thing look super buggy we'll do our little test it's coming back so even if it doesn't come back all the way to the tail that's fine i mean this one's kind of coming half that amount um, i've seen carry specials where they go way over the tail and it's just like a huge pulsating thing. Um, also seen them done super short. So super easy. Like the pattern is very, it's versatile, right? Like you can tie it any way you want. And then just want to make sure as I'm doing this, I'm kind of pulling the fibers down all the way around. And then I can just build up a bit of the head here. Right, you guys get the idea. Play with those fibers a little bit. Yeah, that looks good. Whip finish time. Super easy to tie, eh? Like we've already done two flies here in a matter of minutes. Snip that off. 
grab our glue and we're going to switch off to uh how many hooks do i have here i got three hooks so we're going to do two more with the caddis olive color and then the last one we're going to use the uh the span flex to give it a, a bit of color okay there we go so there's two flies two carry specials super buggy those things look deadly i mean you can just envision those things pulsating through the water when these things get wet i mean i'm getting hungry <laughs> i'm getting hungry just looking at them okay another hook in the vise same hook same thread Snip off the tag, finish dressing this hook as we bring the thread back to the barb. Grab ourselves another feather. Um, if you can pick a feather for the tail, I mean, that's, that's kind of your chance to pick one that's, uh, I don't know, smaller, maybe a little not as appealing to the eyes because all we're going to do is just pinch this down and you form your tail. So doesn't the, the feather itself doesn't need to look uh, pretty by any stretch of the means. We're going to tie it, tie that in. Snip off the top. This is a good time to remind you guys that I am not a professional fly tire. We tie for our fly boxes. We tie because we're having fun. And we are sharing these flies with you today. Okay, so we got our tail. Bring our thread back to the bead. Or to the bead. <laughs> to the hook eye. Come in with our another with another feather here. Get this looking good. There we go. Grab the tips. Bring everything back. Come here, snip the tip. And then push all of those hackle fibers forward. Shiny side facing down. We're just going to tie that in and walk our thread to that tie off point, snip, and have that looking nice. Give ourselves a little test. Looks good. Now's a good time to kind of flat or uh, make these fibers kind of go all over the side of the hook. So when we go to fold them back, it's not just all at the top. You can kind of get the side, the bottom. Now, if you're going to use the hackle pliers and do a rotation, that's you get a lot more, obviously, underneath. Um, and you can do that, too. I mean, maybe maybe using different feathers would be better. Um, and, uh, yeah, that sort of thing. Oh, that's a good beer. Okay. Uh, so that was two in the caddis brown and now i'm bringing out the olive caddis kind of looks like a tankara fly tankara uh okay we'll bring this back Turn our thread and just start wrapping this up. 
Oh man, what a beautiful color. Semperfly does some amazing work with their products. We'll have the, uh, the link to all the materials um, in, the, in the notes below. Okay. Oh, dubbing brush. I always forget that. <laughs> okay, there's the dubbing brush. Comb everything back. Start working on that head. Come in with our whip finish. And there we go. Pull some of these feathers around, but deadly, deadly fly pattern. Zap a gap the head here just to hold all those uh, just to hold the thread in place. So there's the caddis green, caddis olive, the brown, the carry special. She's looking good. Okay, two flies left. We're going to stick with the olive caddis on this one. UTC 70, Rusty Brown. Right back to the barb. Grab ourselves a new feather. And we're just going to finish tying that in. Actually, I'm just going to go over this just to make sure it's secure. And return our thread to the hook eye. We'll grab ourselves a new feather. Get rid of all that fluffy stuff. every fly tires <laughs> every fly tire has the garbage can below it uh it always makes a mess there's our makeshift mercedes-benz logo cut off the top we got our little peace sign Wrap that back, snip, and secure that down. This hook's moving a little bit in the vise. Straighten that out. Give this a little test. Right back to the tail. Looks good. And let's go all of Caddis.
right back to the tail. And we wrap. I will say, making these videos have been fun. The, the chronomid one was awesome. Had a lot of fun doing that one. And the, uh, the blood worm, blood worm tying session was good too. It's just fun doing this. I enjoy it. Okay. Oh, <laughs> dubbing brush. Come on. You guys were waiting for that one. Waiting for me to miss it. Not today. Maybe on the last one. Okay. Thumb and thumb and index finger. Sweep this back. Work on our head. You always sometimes get these little small fibers at the front there, but they'll be fine. You can pick them out if you're super picky. I mean, this one doesn't look great. You kind of screwed the head up on this one, but it's still going to fish. And it's going to look better wet. <laughs> All right. Carry special. Dirty bug yarn. Super buggy. Okay. Wow, we're on the last fly already. We saved the best for last around here. Get our thread started, cut the tag. Finish dressing that hook. And just kind of coming in here just to clean everything up. Do the best we can. Stop at the hook eye. Oh, I need to get one more feather here. Let's pick a nice one for the last one, right? This guy looks good. Getting rid of all the soft feathers below. You're gonna have to bring the vacuum out. <laughs> bring the vacuum out for this one. Uh, grab the tips. Snip the tip. Comb everything back up. Shiny side facing down. Okay, so now Um, we are grabbing this. I think I said span flex, but it's actually called super floss. And this is just a, a super floss olive, light olive. So I'm just going to grab 
a strand off that bushel. And this is going to act as our rib. It's going to give it a little bit more flash in the water. I mean, this stuff doesn't really add durability, but you could also sub this over with a, with a wire and use that. Okay. Oh, keep that from wrapping around the bobbin. Your dirty bug yarn. Tie that in. Give this a couple of wraps all the way up. Oh, give that a nice drop. Let's redo that. And again, I'm stopping just behind that. So there's a bit of a space from the feather tackle to where we're tying this, or where we're gonna snip this off. Snip. Snip secure and dubbing brush. Let's just wrap this up. I screwed that up a little bit. There we go. Oh, no. Okay, well, at least it's... Ah, man, I don't know if I can do this now. This is... Uh, at least it's stretchy. Yeah, see, this is going to be... Man, why did I... I saved the best for last, didn't I? And obviously we're dealing with a shorter amount of material here. I'm just going to cut this one short. You guys get the idea. That wasn't supposed to happen. <laughs> okay. We got a slight rib. We got a little bit too much of a head here. Oh, well. And just kind of tease these feathers around. And a whip finish. And zap a gap. Well, that one didn't really go as according to plan, but uh, it will still catch fish. You can have my guarantee on that. And we're approaching, we're only a few weeks away from ice off. We're at the end of March here now. Uh, so ice off in the BC interior. I mean, I'll be fishing end of April. So uh, I will definitely 100% tie all of these patterns on and uh, we'll fish them until they blow up. Just a fantastic fly pattern. Um, I mean, you can use this trolling around, you can cast and retrieve it, just a beauty. Well, thank you so much guys, really appreciate if you stuck around and made it to the end here. Um, yeah, check out our other videos, hit that like button, smash that subscribe button, and uh, as always, fish on.